We, that's Neil and me, are going to drive the Morgan Plus 8 to Geneva from my house, which is in South Wales. That is a journey of 733 miles, and Google Maps reckons it's going to take us 12 and 3 quarter hours. First, we've got to try and pack some stuff into this car. Right, before I talk you around the cabin of the Morgan Plus 8, you need to know one thing. I am a very, very small man. I'm five foot seven, standing on tiptoes. Okay, I'm now going to get into the vehicle. Okay. Right, so this will be my driving position for the next 12 hours. Neil will sit here. Neil is, by the way, well over six foot, so he's got it worse than me by. That will settle down a little bit, although we'll have a probably a bag resting on my head. A few bits and bobs in there. Um, keep the GoPro mounted on the front, because part of the idea of this is to shoot the journey all the way, looking at a GoPro from South Wales all the way to Geneva to give to guys to use on their Geneva Motor Show stand. Um, it's going to be a labour of love, this is Neil. It really is. There is just no space in here for anything. Now what you need to know about MMC2 is it's the first new Plus 8. It's the development car, that means it's not a finished car, especially the hood which, as we'll discover, is broadly speaking still at an experimental stage. Having no space means ingenious storage solutions like sticking our trusty in-car rig uh, to the boot. But who cares when you have 370 horsepower and 1100 kilograms. Oh, I love these adventures. They're really, really great fun until you're in the car and it just starts to rain on the inside. Anyhow, it's British. The sense of adventure is there. We're having fun. We've got all the way from South Wales to uh, the port of Dover, well, actually Folkestone, for the Eurotunnel. It's, you've done about 200 miles of the 730, so charitably, let's call that just under a third. We're driving the new Morgan Plus 8 to the motor show at which it's going to be launched. That's quite a cool thing to do, you know? I've never done that before. Hello and welcome to Northern France in a Morgan Plus 8. Progress report, we're about 250 miles into our journey. We've been going for what feels like quite a long time and it's absolutely pissing it down with rain. We've got quite a serious water ingress issue here because the truck grooves that we're driving in are quite deep water and as you can see there, you probably can't see there's water coming in everywhere, but I found a use for the Guardian. I think if we just stuff that down there, a bit on my legs, that'll stop them. There we go. Sorted. I can't really see anything out of the screen at the moment uh, because we're evaporating some of the water that's landing on the inside. Um, newspapers are holding up well. Very glad about that little modification. That's worked for us. Um, we're making what can only be described as very bad time. Uh, the stiff upper lip is um, it's softening just slightly because our estimated time of arrival is about seven days' time. Yeah, spirits remain high though, and the Guardian is really soaking up a lot of the pain here. We've got that one covered. Both legs are now what I term wet, but we're ploughing along. And I have to say, these Avon ZZRs are pretty good in these conditions, because the, the motorway is now flooded, and we are still going through it at 75 miles an hour. I think any faster we would, we would be in trouble. We're going to get there. We are going to get there. The best thing about auto route payages is they give you several opportunities to do standing starts. And this car sounds the absolute ghoulies. The weather has changed now after solid rain, it's dried out, the road's dry, and we're going quite a bit quicker as you can hear by the wind noise. Uh, I'm not going to specify exactly how fast we're going, but suffice to say that the Morgan Plus 8 is a fast car. Once you get kind of accustomed to the wind noise, 
it just hammers along. It's fast, very stable. The ride gets much better with speed. The car is much, much more comfortable, uh, let's say, at higher speeds than it is at medium speeds. Really enjoying it. I love the fact that you get this louvre top to the bonnet where the cooling vents are. The fact that you can see the tops of the two headlights and the wing tops to position the car. And the fact that every time you go past another car, they look at you and they smile. You know, it's difficult to put a value on a car that can do that because of course your Ferrari, Lamborghini, more often than not, just will not do that. The Morgan will. It's strange, isn't it, how things can change so quickly. Two hours ago, I was getting wet knees thinking, oh God, this is a bit too much. But now, we're barreling south at a fair old rate of knots. Loving this. So the key numbers are 780 miles in 11 hours and 45 minutes. It's been a really interesting journey. It started out in a blizzard. It then got so much better and by the end, do you know what? I found myself a very British modern AC Cobra because it's just a muscle car and I really, really enjoyed it. Pretty tired, fatigued, but a really good adventure. Great fun. enough adventuring, you want to know some more about this new Morgan. It's called the Plus 8 and it uses a 370 horsepower BMW V8 and a BMW 6-speed gearbox. Underneath it's basically an Aero 8 aluminium chassis but being a Morgan it uses a wooden frame to support the body. Yes, it's wooden. This car is a mixture of modern and ancient. There are quaint triple wipers and Aero formed aluminium panels. That motor makes it seriously rapid, and the exhaust note alone is worth half the £80,000 asking price. There's even an iPod connector. You just can't actually hear the hi-fi. But let's face it, you can't drive all the way to Geneva, be within one hour of Chamonix, and not come and drive the car on some little coals and twisty road. So, balls to Geneva. Let's test the car a bit. So what's it like, this Morgan? Well, it's not the last word in sophistication, I have to be honest. Yes, it's got the aluminium chassis, but got a little bit of skull shape and the steering column does a little bit but these are very very bumpy roads it is just a proper experience there you can hear that noise wind in the hair upright driving position wheel on your chest it's classic British roadster and it's fast as well there's no doubt it's fast you do have to have your wits about you though the steering on the car is very fast quite stiffly sprung so it doesn't like big corner bumps and there are no systems at all so if you get it sideways it's kind of your problem. Not something I really want to be doing too much around here because there are plenty of immovable objects to clatter on the side of the road. It's a car that you kind of just try and build a rhythm with and stroke through the corners. But you can smell what's going on outside. I mean the protection from the elements is zero when you're like this and I love it. I want to be buffeted, I want to be hit around, I want to feel what's going on. I want to smell the mountains. <laughs> Do you know what I love most about this car? It's that it kind of transcends motoring. Sounds awfully clear by now, but every journey you take in this isn't really a journey, it's a mini adventure. That's what we've had since we left the UK. It's about as far from perfect as a sports car can be, but I absolutely love it. <laughs>